you can purchase them for the new year. It is $24 for the whole year. And you can mark your envelopes, uh, you mark it that it's for the Ellen White notes and then let me know so I can order them for you. So thank you. Thank you. We have a uh, various announcements this morning. Potluck today again, everybody's invited. Baptism today will be, Kim will be uh, baptized today. So that'll take place here real soon. We have a, a two second reading member transfers. One's transferring in and one's transferring out. Uh, the first one is Gladys Nyengo Yao, uh, Lakeside SDA Church in Malawi to Shorelines. Do we have a motion for this transfer in? Do we have a second? All in favor say amen. 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 Welcome, Gladys. Now we have a transfer out. Christine Owongo. <coughs> from to Forest Park from Shorelines. Do we have a motion on this transfer out? Do we have a second? All in favor say amen. Amen. It's carried. Now we have a first reading today for a, a new position in the ch or a position in the church that needs to be filled, and it's a background screening coordinator. And Jenny Murphy will be uh, taking that position. But this is our first reading. Next Sabbath we'll have a second reading to vote that in. And our other announcements was prayer meeting again Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. We have a beautiful prayer meeting. It's, we're all invited, and we encourage you all to attend on Zoom. We're always blessed abundantly. And then we have prayer in the prayer room after the service, whoever would like to attend that uh, prayer session. And now the pastor will come up prior to this baptism. everyone. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I want to thank the Lord for coming together to worship him today. We are honored and, and thanking God for a wonderful occasion today. It's going to be Kim's baptism. And um, we're just excited and happy uh, for her ded uh, dedication and her uh, commitment. Uh, this is actually a rebaptism for her. So what a wonderful occasion it is for us to celebrate with her. Um, She's already gone through this for uh, baptismal covenant questions, but today we are just going to um, go through this really quick, and it's just a matter of confirming her uh, commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. So you can come closer to the mic for me, uh, Kim. You guys know Kim, right? Anybody? All right. Yeah. Wonderful. We are, we are happy for her, and, and we're glad for her decision. All right. So. Question number one, do you believe there is one God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal person? Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for your sins and believe that by God's grace, through faith in his shed blood, you are saved from sin and its penalty? Yes. Yes. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, believing that God in Christ has forgiven your sins and given you a new heart? And do you renounce the sinful ways of the world? Yes. Do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, your intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary, and accept his promise of transforming grace and power to live a loving, Christ-centered life in your home and before the world? Yes. Amen. Do you believe that God, that the Bible is God's inspired word, the only rule of faith and practice for the Christians? Do you covenant to spend time regularly in prayer and Bible study? Yes. Do you accept the Ten Commandments as a transcript of God's character and revelation of his will? Is it your purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep this law, including the Fourth Commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week, the Sabbath of the Lord, a memorial of creation? Do you look forward to the soon coming of Jesus and the blessed hope when this mortal shall put on immortality as you prepare to meet the Lord, will you witness to his loving salvation by using your talents in personal soul winning, endeavor to help others to be ready for his glorious appearing? Yes. 
do you accept the biblical teaching of the spiritual gifts and believe um, the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of the remnant church? Do you believe in church organization as your purpose to worship God and to support the church through your tithes and offerings and by your personal efforts and influence? Do you believe that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and you will honor God by caring for it? Avoid the use of that which is harmful and abstain from all uncleans and the misuse of trafficking of narcotics or any other un un uh, harmful types of drugs. Yes. Do you know and understand the fundamental principle taught by Adventist Church? Is it your purpose by the grace of God to fulfill his will by ordering your life in harmony with his principles? Yes. Do you accept the New Testament teachings of baptism, which today we're celebrating, which is immersion and to be and desire to be as a public expression of faith of Christ and forgiveness of your sins? Yes. Do you accept and believe the Seventh-day Adventist Church as the remnant of Bible prophecy and that people from every race, language, color, are invited and accepted into its fellowship? And do you desire to be a member of this local congregation of the World Church? Yes. Amen. And with that, church, I want to recommend to you for baptism today. Can I get a, a second? All right. All excited to uh, join me in, in celebrating this today. Say amen. 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 And with that, we're, we, are, we, are, we are here for you, Tim, and we're, we're, we can't wait for baptism to happen. Thank you, everybody. Let us prepare for our call to worship. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. Please rise. Thy name to sing, help us to praise, Father all glorious, for all victorious, come and reign over us, ancient of days. Father in heaven, we seek your presence now in this worship hour. We pray for your blessing from Jesus as our great high priest now who's praying for us and ministering all of his merits for our salvation and restoration of our character to become more like you. So bless us, Father, with your Holy Spirit as we seek you with all of our heart and soul this morning in this worship hour time. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's time for our children's story, and Seth will be telling the story this morning. And that's for all of us, the older children and the young children. So children, get your little baskets and uh, bring, uh, bring them down the aisles as the church members uh, put an offering in. Thank you.
happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Children, happy Sabbath. What do you do today? Are you all doing chores? Chores? Did you sweep? Sweeper? Ooh, my t-shirt. All right. Um, we thank God for this beautiful day, and uh, we thank God for these children. Before we start our children's story, our illustration, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for your children. Thank you for the lessons that you have for us to learn. Impress upon us to be obedient to what you have to say to us because it's out of love that you do these things for us. And as your children, we know that you care for us. Bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, children, today I have a very, very simple illustration. And I want you all to help me with this illustration. What I'm going to do, I have, what is that? A gel, right? Anything in it? Apart from uh, the star, nothing, right? Okay, we'll set this gel right here. And what are those? Cotton balls, right? Those are cotton balls. What I want you to do, Judy, could you please help me? Come up here. I want you to give every one of your friends some cotton balls. You got a handful, so give them as many as the hands can carry. There you go. And while you do that, I am going to pour some water into this jar right here. But we won't overfill the jar. It's not all the way full. So what I want you to do, and this is the question, how many cotton balls do you have? We are going to count every single cotton ball as we put it in this jar that is almost full of water. Now, I want you to tell me one thing. Do you think by putting those cotton balls in that glass right there, the water will overflow? Do you think so? Do you think it might? What do you think? You might? Yeah? What about? Maybe? Can we try? Let's give it a shot. All right. Come on. Come on, Judy. Come on, everybody. I want you to go ahead and uh, put all your cotton balls in there. Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, right? Is it close to overflowing? All right, who's next? Come on up. All right, let's count. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Is it getting close? No? Ah, what do you do? All right. Who's next? Come on. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You only had seven. Ah, we got more balls in there. All right. Is it close? It's overflowing. Who's next? Come. Come on. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Let's see if this is going to overflow. Ooh. Is it close? Let's see here. What's going on? All right. Who's next? One, two, only three. Ah, okay. Come on. Let's see what happens here. Maybe this is going to overflow. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow. What do you think? Is it going to overflow? Let's see. What do you have to do? Huh? What do you have to do? Hey, look what we have. More cotton balls. I lost the count. So what I'm going to do, let's see. Let's just dump all these liquids here. Let's see. Maybe it will. But I don't know. I haven't tried this before, so I don't know. Let's see. It looks tough to me here. Jeez. All right. Let's 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 keep going. Do we still have more room in there? Maybe. Okay. Let's put some more. Let's see. Maybe. 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 Ah. Thank you very much. Maybe that last one will do it. No? Ah, I think I'm tired. It's still not overflowing. Well, I don't know how many cotton balls you put in there, but there's quite a lot. What does that tell us? What was that, Judy? Is it overflowing? Yes. What do you think? More water. More water? Mm -hmm. So there's more volume of water than the cotton balls? Is all what you're saying? All right. He says more volume of water than the cotton balls. All right. Now, what do we know about cotton balls? Huh? Absorbent. Right? So, if we do this, it absorbs whatever it is that you put in it. Right? Now, that small cotton ball is even smaller with water, right? Why? Because of what it's made of. Cotton balls have huge air gaps. So, when you fill this jar with cotton balls, they just absorb the water and they shrink. Now, it tells us something else. Is it possible? Has it been possible for us to make the jar overflow with water? Was it possible? No. 
is anything impossible with God? Is there? So that tells us that whatever you put before God in prayer and supplication, what seems impossible sometimes and most of the times with God is possible because we've been trying to fill this with cotton balls. We haven't been able to get the jar to overflow. We, we put more water? Ah, if we put more water, then maybe it will overflow. But at the same time, it tells us also that when it comes to God and how he works, it's hard for us to understand because we think we have way, way more cotton balls that should make the water overflow, but the substance that makes the cotton balls does not allow for the jar to overflow with water, regardless of how many cotton balls we put in there. God sees things different than the way we view them. And as children, God sees us different from the way we see ourselves. He is loving and caring. He cre created us in a way that only he can appreciate what he made. So for us today, it is an object lesson that when we come before God, we present to him the things that we need to present to him. He has a way of making things work out for us. We remember the story of a prophet who visited a certain widow and her son. We also know about that very same story where certain things in the house, very, very crucial to their survival, were low, right? And then what happened? This certain prophet prayed and God acted upon that faith that these crucial items for their survival, these food items, never ran out. Right? When we come before God, the amount of faith that you have, that is what God works with. Could be this small, could be this big. Regardless of all that, it is still faith in God. So when you get out of here today, whatever it is that you present to God by faith, know that he is going to answer you. All right, children? Thank you all very much for being wonderful participants. Go back to your seats now. Kim's baptism. Kim Perry. Kim wants to be baptized today because she says, I have accepted the Lord as my personal Lord and Savior that sacrificed his life for me I have decided to follow Jesus. Her favorite Bible verse is found in Psalms 51, 10 to 12. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit.
Our praise song today is going to be hymn number 520, He Hideth My Soul. Savior is Jesus. 
can we get everybody to rise for our hymn of praise? It's going to be 335, What a Wonderful Savior. Today's scripture reading is found in Psalms 103, verse 1 to 6. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquity, who healeth all thy disease. You may be seated. Thank you, Kelly, for reading the word to us. It's a precious promise from God to us. What more could we ask other than God's promises? to save us and restore us and transform us and fit us for a soon return. It is now our privilege to uh, exercise our faith in God, trust him, not for merit for our salvation, but out of love for God and what he has done for us and is doing on our behalf every moment of our lives. So it is our time to be part of this service and giving our tithes and our love offerings and appreciation for our salvation in Christ. And of course, these monies will be used to win other souls to a knowledge of Jesus and to receive Jesus as their personal Savior and Lord to be a part of the eternal kingdom. And we get that privilege this morning again to be part of that winning souls to Jesus through our faithful offerings and our faithful tithes. The offering today is for our church budget 
So all loose offerings will be applied to this offering this morning. Shall we bow our heads? Father in heaven, thank you for your merciful love, for saving us through the person of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for this privilege we have of partaking of the salvation for souls by giving our faithful tithes and our love offerings and appreciation of your goodness and what you have and are doing on our behalf. So we pray for your blessing, Father, upon those that are giving by faith. And we thank you, Father, that those who can't give will be able to give soon as they trust you in a greater way in their lives. And may these funds be used to win many souls to Jesus is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Truth. True worship may sometimes become uncomfortable or even risky because it requires doing God's will, not ours. His instructions and preferences should be considered, not ours. Jesus said, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. During the time of the Israelites, three times a year, all men appeared before the Lord to worship. It would require them to risk their land, leaving it behind, surrounded by covetous and belligerent tribes. But God promised them that neither will any man covet your land when you go up to appear before the Lord your God three times in the year. It would be apparently safer to stay in their place to protect it. After all, what would prevent their enemies from rushing upon these unprotected houses and ravaging them with fire and sword? But God has promised them protection, as he now promises blessings to those who take risks by keeping the Sabbath or returning the tithe. The Israelites knew that God's promises could only be fulfilled if they would have all their sins confessed and followed his directions. Imagine thousands of Israelites heading to the Holy Convocation in Jerusalem singing, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. True worship requires doing God's will, even when it seems unsafe. It may not seem safe to keep the Sabbath or to return tithes and offerings sometimes faithfully but the highest safety can only be found when we are in God's hands, trusting in Him and obeying His directions. In all circumstances of life, may we put our desires last and God first. Those who are able to come to kneel, please, as we seek the Lord in prayer. Our God and Father in heaven, with grateful heart we come before you this morning. Oh, Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. We thank you that you love us, sinful and undeserving as we are. We are so thankful, dear Lord, that you have always, always, dear Lord, watch over us. And yet you, and that you have always provided for our needs. We also thank you, dear Lord, for keeping us safe, for gathering us once again together to worship you. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for our church family. We thank you for looking after us all the time, for keeping us safe. Dear Lord, the list is so long. There's so much we are so thankful for. We do not own anything in this world, dear Lord, but you have provided more than anything that we need. And we are very, very grateful, dear Lord. And also we ask that, dear Lord, when we lose sight of all the blessings that you have showered upon us, when we sin, when we worry, when we fear, when our behavior is less than what a child's God, child of God should behave, forgive us. 
Forgive us, dear Lord, when our biases prevents us from approaching people and for telling them about you. Father Lord, give us strength, give us faith, and help us to be better. Help us to see ourselves, help us to see our sins, and help us, dear Lord, to bring them all at your feet. And this morning, dear Lord, each of your people, each of us have burdens in our hearts. Father, we bring them all at your feet. And we pray, dear Lord, that you would intervene because you have promised us that nothing is impossible with you. For those who are sick, dear Lord, we ask for healing. For those who are sad because they have loved ones who have just recently passed away, comfort, dear Lord. For those in need, dear Lord, please provide. And for the people in our prayer list and their prayer petitions, we ask that you please intervene according to your will. We also pray, dear Lord, this morning that you would be with Pastor Dave as he gives to us your message. Help us to have receptive minds and receptive hearts, Father, so that we would not only hear, but it would be written in our hearts so that, dear Lord, we will be better when we come out of this church. We also pray, dear Lord, that our lives would be a reflection of your son, Jesus, that wherever we go, whatever we do, wherever we are, we would be a reflection of you, just like we have seen people in our lives who you have done so much to, and Father, we see you too in them. May people see you in all of us, in each and every one of us. Thank you so much for your loving care. Thank you that you always listen to our prayers. And first of all, thank you that you are always a prayer away, only a prayer away. Thank you for your son, Jesus, that made that possible for us to approach you anytime, any day. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jim will be bringing our special music on her baptismal day. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Shai, and I also can't sing, so don't listen to the words of the song. Don't listen to my voice, but the words of the song inside. Sometimes I fall to my knees and pray. Shy, do you not know what to thank you for today? Sometimes I feel like I've gone away. voice that can't stay. Come, Jesus, come. We've been waiting so long for the day you return. Redeemer, we pray and right and be wrong. We need Be 
Taking you for granted We come for the real And the sun has to freeze And all will be new And the colors will change Come to the sun the day you wake up to hear my voices and I don't do wrong I need you right now come and turn this around deep down I know the sun is in force come to the This place is the end. Come and lay it all down. Cause the work is on. The wind's right now. There's no need to wait. The skies will be white. The rivers of grace come to the sun we've been waiting so long for the day you wake up to hear my voices and I don't do wrong I need you Deep down I know the sun is in force, come to the sun, come to the sun, come to the sun. wonderful inspiration in, in music. It's a prayer that I think we all have been waiting for. Amen? Come, Jesus, come. And that's the prayer that we all should be praying. Um, at this time, I want to invite the elders of the church, current or previous elders, come forward. Even pastors, retired pastors. I want to invite David as well, um, and, and as well as Edgar, come. All the other elders, please come. We're going to have prayer for uh, Kim, but before that, we will have a voting into membership, acceptance into Shoreline uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church. <clears throat> Are you blessed thus far? Amen. 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 We're so excited. Um, we want to make a motion that we accept Kim into the membership to Shoreline Seventh-day Adventist Church. Okay. I, before I even say anything, everybody excited? So... <laughs> Happy, we got move. A second? second. All right, if you are excited and ready to accept her into Shoreline Church family, let's say amen. 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 Now that you said amen, it is our responsibility as church family to pray for one another, to encourage one another, and to make sure that we are there when Kim needs us. Amen. You know, it is our duty as church family. You know, when you have kids, family, you take care of the kids and you take care of one another. And Kim has just been baptized today. And so I challenge you, church family, you know, uh, a person who uh, joined the church and the church family, they don't need condemnation. They don't need judging. They don't need any of that. Amen? Amen. 
we need to pray, we need to love, and we need to encourage one another. And whenever she needs our, our prayers and help, uh, let's be there. Let's support her. Amen? Amen. So, Kim, come, come to the middle. We'd love to uh, pray for you. Let's come, elders. Come and let's gather around her um, as we pray for her. I want to invite two elders to pray for us who would like to volunteer. Okay? There are Mike and then one more. Okay? That's very good. All right, let's lay our hands on her. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we pray for your blessing upon him and in your walk with you. Pray that the power of Jesus will be in her heart Amen. and the power of the Holy Spirit in her heart, Father, leading on her on her journey now with Jesus. Amen. She'll grow to become more like him each day. And Father, until the, the day that Jesus comes, may Kim be faithful and true, and may your angels hedge about her and protect her and minister to her. Amen. And Father, may us here at Caroline and abroad be of service uh, to Kim and her needs, encouraging her and blessing her. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our God and our Father in heaven, we want to thank you so much for the life of your father, Kim. Thank you for loving her. Thank you for saving her. And now, Lord, we want to commit her into your own hands. Hold her with your own right, righteous hand. Amen. May you lead her. May you guide her. May you provide all the spiritual nourishment that she needs. Amen. May you fight for her. Amen. And see when she will make it into your hand. Amen. Help us as a church to gather around her and all every other church member to support them and to support each other and to be there for each other. Amen. And see their coming. Amen. Thank you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for everything. And thank you for salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, before you go, we have a gift for you. We want to let you know that we love you here in Shoreline. We're praying for you. Uh, congratulations. Amen. Welcome to the family. We're going to give her a, a hand or a hug. It's up to you. You know, one of the reasons why I became a pastor, even though it was a challenge to be one, was when I was 15 or 16 years old. I gave my life to the Lord, and I was, one day after I, I got baptized, and I started giving Bible study. And um, as I gave Bible study, one of my friends and her entire family got baptized. And I... Couldn't believe it. The whole entire family got baptized. And I had this inexplainable feeling in my heart. I could never explain it. When I saw her and her family got baptized, I'm like, wow, this is it, what God is calling me. And so that was one of the inspiration why I became a pastor, because I said, I, I said to myself, that is the feeling that you could never explain. When you see somebody... Give their heart to God in water baptism. And so, Kim, congratulations. We, we love you. We're praying for you. And uh, we also want to ask the church to keep her in prayer. Amen? Amen. We also want to thank you for singing in your special day. What a high Sabbath it is. What a great privilege to uh, be a part of your experience today. We also want to thank all of our participants. And we want to welcome our church family. Thank you for being here. Our, our church family, and as well as our guests, thank you for uh, joining us today, um, and as well as those of you who are watching online. And uh, we, we'll be talking about living with Thanksgiving today, because I realize that we are, we've been, we've been through a series that's kind of hard, right? We've been through a finance series, I mean, that's, you know, the pastor was hitting it hard, right? I hope we learned something. And, um, and so today is going to be a very simple message, living with Thanksgiving, since uh, next week is going to be Thanksgiving. And uh, I actually will be flying to the Philippines on Monday. 
And so keep me in prayer. I'll be there for a week to see my mom. And so uh, I'll miss you. So I will be here next week, Saturday. That's why I'm sharing this Thanksgiving message with you today. And so I hope that we will be blessed and we will be living with Thanksgiving in our lives every day. Let us pray together as we invite the presence of the Lord once more in our church service. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. And Lord, we celebrate and we have so many reasons to be thankful. We're, gra we're glad and, and grateful for our dear sister Kim for her dedication and her baptism today. And Lord, we also want to thank you that we're alive and well and still walking. Maybe we face some trials along the way, but we are here living with thanksgiving in our lives. And so today, Father, please speak to us, encourage us, challenge us to come up higher in our experience with you. May we know you and your love for us. And as for me, Lord, I have nothing to offer. Please cover me with the blood of Jesus and that he might be uplifted. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you guys like the decoration? We want to thank all the, those who had taken their time to decorate. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for doing that. And so today we are talking about living with thanksgiving. Our scripture reading, which was found in the book of Psalm, chapter 103, verse 1 to 3, tells us, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your disease. Amen? Amen? What a beautiful passage it is for us to be reminded this morning. It's a great news that we are all here today to praise the Lord. You know, I thought about what's appropriate to preach during Thanksgiving season, but what's appropriate is always about Thanksgiving. Amen? And it's just basically a message that Sometimes pastors preach about once a year, and also as, as people, we remember only once a year, right? We gather together, we got those big birds laying in, our, uh, in front of our table, right? And we share stuff, and we fellowship, and we eat together. And so sometimes that's what we remember Thanksgiving is all about. But there are many things we could talk about, but it is fitting that we should focus on the thoughts not only about once a year, because you see, friends, the Bible tells us that we should always be living with thanksgiving. It, is, should, it shouldn't be a one-year event. It should be every day of our lives that we are living with thanksgiving. Amen? You see, the Bible tells us in that book, right? The Bible tells us that uh, uh, in Psalms 105, please open there because I know we saw a few verses, but there are other verses in there that we don't want to miss out. So the Bible tells us there in the book of Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. Again, I'm going to read it because this text is very important when we talk about living with thanksgiving and how we should live our lives every single day, not just once a year. Notice what it says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Again, I'm reading because there's few verses that we miss. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy disease. Verse 4, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfy thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. So the Bible tells us here that we should always live with thanksgiving. Basically, David is making an attempt of expressing his love, his commitment, and gratitude to God's love and to God's goodness in his life. You see, the background tells us, the text says in verses 1 and 2, that bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, all of your guts, all of your inner power, the Bible says that you should bless the Lord. What does that even mean? What does that mean to bless the Lord? I thought we were supposed to be asking God to bless, uh, uh, to, 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 to bless us, right? Too often that's what we do, basically, right? In fact, when we pray, we always say, Lord, we extend our hand. Give me, give me, give me, right? It's like a, a kid. Mommy, daddy, buy me this, buy me that, buy me this, buy me that. I'm not saying any name because I don't want to embarrass anybody. But 
They do that all the time. Mommy, buy me this, buy me that, give me this, give me that, right? That's us. Amen? We bring our prayer requests, nothing wrong with that. We bring our prayers, we bring our, our concern, we bring our need, and, and, and that happens every day. Lord, give me this, give me that, give me this. But the text here tells us what the opposite direction. What does it say? Bless the Lord. Now, how do you do that? How do you bless the Lord, O oh, my soul? And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Oh, friend, this is amazing. Because someone has called this David's hallelujah chorus. Notice that in this text, he addresses someone. Who is it? He addresses his own soul. Are you guys following? He's not addressing anybody. He's... You know, hey, somebody need to be thankful. He's addressing himself, his own soul, and he's talking to himself. Now, David is not crazy, okay? Because some people think when you talk to yourself, you are actually, you've lost it. There are times that that is crazy. Amen? Maybe some of us need to stop talking to ourselves. But there are times when the Bible said that we need to look within to understand what God has been doing in our lives. Amen? It's called self-meditation. Self-understanding of what God is doing for you. He is reminding himself as he prays the Lord of all that God has done. But in this context, we see that he is using a grammatical device here. And he is instructing his own self. You notice, he kind of repeat himself. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The second thing, bless the Lord, O my soul. He's basically using a grammatical device. He's following a pattern of what it means to praise God. You look at and you say, Lord, thank you for being like this. And now I got to look at again. What else does God has done, does God has done that I need to look and say thank you again and again? This is important to a proper interpretation of this passage. Why is that? Because verses 1 and 2 He's basically praising the Lord and he's counting all of his blessings. It is a prayer of nothing but pure praise. There is no supplication in that text. There is no request. There is no petition. There is no plea in the prayer. It is a pure and adulterated praise to the God of heaven because he deserves it. Amen. David was awestruck with God's power and God's character and God's blessing in his life that he simply said there is nothing here that says I need something. All in this text that says and, and indicate is that I am going to praise God for all that he has done for me. Now how often have you done that? Well next week pastor we are doing that over a, a meal right? But that's not what I'm asking about. We are talking about a life living with thanksgiving. We are, told, we, are, we are not told, by the way, about the circumstances in which David is writing this psalm. But it is not difficult to imagine what David had gone through. Because when we look at his life, he's gone through some rough experience. Looking at his life... There was a countless blessings. And of course, he did face some burdens. But David, instead of focusing on his struggle, instead of focusing on his need, instead of focusing on what me, myself, and I need, he realized how good God and has been undeserving of God's goodness and God's blessings. Spring up from the depths of his heart, gushing out unto his parchment, started writing prayer of praise. This benediction of expression of gratitude toward the Lord. David praised the Lord with a song. You see, if you ever have a problem praising the Lord, you simply have to read this psalm. And you say, Pastor, I don't know how to express stuff like that. Well, friend, make Psalm 103. Be your psalm of thanksgiving. If you don't know, 
uh, pastor, I don't know how to express myself. Just read the psalm and say, Lord, this is my expression of pure praise to you. Because we need it more than anything else. Oh, friends, a psalm is a song. All the psalms were, in fact, sung by the Hebrew. Everywhere they journey into the promised land, everywhere they were in the wilderness, or when they go and, and, and fight wars, whenever they go or celebrate the festivals, they would come from all the corners, uh, and they would come and they would sing the songs of psalms, the different chapters of psalm. You see, as the book of psalm is also known as the hymn book, so David sang this song of praise to the Lord. I can see David full of emotion, passionate in all that he did, praising God with all his heart. Friend, he'd have a difficult time in our church today if he was here. He would have. Because when David, if David was ever here and he see one of us is falling asleep, right? David would have a hard time and say, what is going on? I thought we're supposed to be here. Lord, thank you for all that you have done. It's hard for David to be. You see, he believed in putting all of his effort. This ancient Hebrew king was also an accomplished musician. You know that David is a musician as well. A man who sang with feeling and his conviction. Some people say in the church, hey, don't sing with your, your feelings. We have that, people, right? We well, gotta sing with conviction. It's true. You know what Jesus said? Worship God in what? Spirit and in truth. You know those two things. Deal with the emotion of the heart and the intellectual of the mind. So when you praise God, you don't just sing with I sing the mighty power of God. And you look uh, I mean you look like depressed. Right? We do that a lot of times. We don't feel the word. We don't feel the experience that this is actually was poured out by some people's experience and how they've been through difficulties and in life. They've gone through struggles and they wrote down the experience in the words of the song. And when they sing, they're not just like, they're not bored. And by the way, we need to sing from the heart, but also sing with the understanding. So Jesus said, worship God in spirit. The word spirit deals with the emotion, the inner part of man to basically understand what you're singing and feel the words. And then you're intellectually knowing what it is. This is about the goodness of God. There is theology included. There is life experience included. There is goodness of God included. So you're not just going in blindly. Amen? Because too often as Adventists, we are very good at singing boring songs. The song itself is not boring, but we are singing it boring. Right? Now, you might say, well, Pastor, the reason why I don't sing out is because I might be out of tune. I don't care. If you sing, and you sing loud, and you're out of tune, that's okay. If someone next to you and say, hey, you're out of tune, hey, I say, what about you? You're not singing. <laughs> Amen? And the best way to do that is to practice singing in the bathroom first, Right? How many of you do that at home? Okay, you should. Right? I don't care if you sing off during church service. Right? If you're singing off, I don't care. You see, God doesn't care if you sing off or you sing beautifully. Now, if you're singing in the front, that's a different story, right? <laughs> Amen? We're not singing. We're we're, we're talking about as a congregational song. When we are singing as a whole, God doesn't care how you sound as long as you sing with all your heart and you know it, what you're singing. So next time we're singing, you're going to sing it out. Amen? Because these are experience of what it means to praise God and to live a life. This was a song of praise. David sang it with joy with the de deep desire to let God and all else know and hear what, how much, and how much he loved the God of Israel. The psalmists are filled with all kinds of praise song. You know that? I know as Adventists, we don't raise our hand, but actually it's biblical to raise your hand. There's many things. Maybe one day we'll go through 
a worship. Now, we don't want, we want to avoid the extreme. Amen? Ellen White talks about balanced worship, right? And so we need to find out what that is. So in, in the book of Psalm, for example, uh, this one right here in Psalm 66, 1 through 4, it, take, it talks about, it says, make a joyful shout to God all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise, glo- uh, his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you. You and you sing, sing to you. They shall sing praise to your name, Selah. Oh, friends, many other. Psalms 81, Psalms 92, and many other. That, that is what we call song of praise to the Lord. David was serious about praising God. It wasn't something he only did at the temple during religious ceremony. It was part of his everyday experience. He was grateful to the Lord and he could not help but praise God. We need to give consideration to this when we come to sing God's praises. Now, David was, of course, singing the ancient version of what we call today, Count Your Blessings. You guys know that song, right? Because that is basically what that Psalms 103 is all about. Count your blessing. Bless the Lord, oh my. So that's, it's called count your blessing in our church hymnal. You see, 103 verse, verse uh, uh, 2, it, it says that forget not his what? His benefits. It mentioned to always remember God's benefit for us. So question, what are some of the benefits of serving God and being a Christian in general? Well, friend, there's a lot. There's a lot of benefit in serving God and being a believer, you know, in comparison to the world. You know, it is important for us to know what those benefits are. The first thing is sanity. Amen? The world drives us mad and crazy. But God gives us sanity. You woke up this morning and you can't actually put your shoes on. You know that? People didn't have that opportunity today. You actually woke up and you actually can see. Some people didn't have that opportunity today. You could use your arms and your leg and you can hear. Even though sometimes my wife says you can't barely hear. Right? That's what you call a male brain. Right? So we're getting into our relationship uh, 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 series soon. So this is kind of, uh, you know, a little intro, right? And so there, there's so many things as believers. You can be thankful why you're here today. And what about good health? We're not just talking about physical health, Amen. We're talking about mental health as well. Spiritual health as well. Now you might say, well, Pastor, how how can I be thankful when I'm sick? Right? But you're actually, you should be thankful you're alive. You're thank be thankful that God sees you worthy. That you're alive today. Oh friends, what about Peace of mind. That's a big one for me. Because so many things can pull us away, but God has given us a peace of mind amidst trials, amidst situations that sometimes are very difficult for us to handle. What about God blessing us with relationship? God has blessed us with some good relationship. And I know there are relationships that we need to work on Maybe you have not talked to your brother or sister, your mom, or, or, or somebody. God has blessed you to be alive. And friends, you know, don't go to a funeral and say how good your, your family was. Say it today. Let them know how much you love them, how much you care about them, how much you appreciate them being in your life. And that's how we build this good relationship. What about you? What are some of the benefits you personally know serving the Lord? I'm sure if I'm giving you a chance and a time, you, have, you will have a long list. 
You see, friends, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that I can be here in front of you today. You know, if it wasn't for the benefit of God coming into my life, I wouldn't be in the front telling you anything about him. Because if I followed in my life, I would have ended up in three places as a young person. I would have probably ended up in drugs, which I was starting to. Or be homeless because that's what you ended up, or in jail, or probably dead, right? Many of us can testify what God has brought us from. Those troubled experiences that we knew were so devastating. We were so desperate for a need of God's presence. And we know who brought us through the circumstances. It was by God's love and by God's grace alone that we are here today. What about freedom? Freedom to worship and many more. Amen? We take these things for granted. Even just for such clean water, right? Uh, well, you know, we don't really think about that. We don't care about that. Clean water, it's such a very important, vital part of humanity around the world. America is blessed with it. You go to other parts, they don't have that. They do have running water. You run and you get your... Your, 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 uh, your bucket, and you run back. That's their running water, right? But you, you just press the tap, and you have it right there. I mean, this thing that we take for granted, imagine one day if all of those were taken away from you, right? And this happened when we were in Michigan, right? When there was that water thing that happened in Grand Rap, I can't remember, but we were there in the seminary when that happened. We had to, like, bring truckloads of, like, water bottles because they didn't have water. They had lead in all their pipes, and people were being poisoned by it. Just that. And you think that that could not happen to America. Oh, friend, you better believe it. It could happen anytime. The freedom to worship, the, the freedom to actually come and open the Bible and, and talk about spiritual things, Actually, that is a good thing. Some places in the world, people were actually put in jail for doing that. And friend, a time is coming when you and I will not be able to open the Bible and read and pray and sing together. When you will be put in jail, when you say the, 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 the word of God, when you preach the word of God, you talk about God, you will be put in jail. Friend, that is not far off. And many of us, we get so... Uh, just desensitized with the luxury of life, thinking that it's not going to go away. Oh, friends, better think again. Because these are the benefits that God has blessed us with. Imagine one day just cooking like camping in your own house, right? Some of us probably need to do that and go into the wood and kind of learn, relearn things and appreciate life. Maybe we need to teach our kids about being thankful for what they have and what they shouldn't Oh, buy me this, buy me that. Now the season is coming. Oh, I, mommy, I need to buy a new iPad, a new, a new devices. Oh, friends, that is a waste. We should be teaching them about morals and love and service and taking care of one another. These are the things that will, will, will show them the benefit of being blessed. So in America, you are blessed. I'm going next week to the Philippines, and I know exactly I'm going to be staying in a bamboo hut, right? I don't mind. I, I was born in a bamboo hut. And we, we had like six people in the house, and we only, you know, there's no room. So we all slept in the same place. And then when it's time for, be, uh, for, for dinner we, or, or lunch or whatever, we just put away our beddings, and we eat in the same place, Right? Some, some of us are just so spoiled. We have our own room. We have our own bathroom. These are the simplicity of life. But we're forgetting how blessed we are. Because we always complain about things. We complain about things. We, don't, we forget all of these little things. Friends, just go to another third world country and see how they live. I'm not saying that, uh, that, that, that it's a bad thing. No. Actually know how to appreciate little things in life. Amen. 
So I challenge you. What is, what are the benefit of serving the Lord? In fact, verse 3, the Bible tells us there. It says, who forgives all your what? Iniquities. Who heal all your disease. And this disease have come in many forms. Mental, physical. Who forgives all your iniquity. Oh friend, that is the beautiful thing for me. He forgives all your iniquity. Because I know I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for God's forgiveness. He forgives all your iniquity. Because forgiving your iniquity equals to spiritual and mental health. You know that? If you live a life of, 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 of bitterness and forgiving, friends, you're not hurting anybody. You're hurting yourself. You know that? Forgiving somebody, it doesn't mean that you're actually, you know, uh, giving them a favor. You're actually giving yourself a favor. Because if you don't forgive, the person that suffered the most is you. Now, let me tell you, I don't know if I've shared this, but I've been abused as a child, molested as a child. I can't even remember my, uh, my perpetrator's face. That's how much I've forgiven. Because I know the person that needs healing the most is not the perpetrator, but it's me. Now, they need to be in jail, amen, if they do that. I'm not saying that you are free from consequences. Not at all. So when I forgive somebody, it doesn't mean they are off the hook. No. It's for me that I need healing. Amen? Amen. You need healing. You need forgiveness. So you need to forgive. And that's how you bring healing into your life. Oh, friend, this is very important for us. Because God forgives all of our iniquity. We cannot expect God to forgive us if we don't know how to forgive. You see, health of the mind, if you know God has forgiven you, you and all your sins, you will have a good mental and emotional and psychological health. You can actually sleep at night. You know that? You might be broke, but you sleep at night. Compared to someone who might be really wealthy, but yet they can't sleep because they have no peace of mind. One of the names of the devil is the accuser of the brethren, and he has done a very good job accusing you of your sin. And we give in to his ideas that, oh, you're not worthy. Oh, friend, you are more, wor more worthy than anything. You know why? Because Jesus' life, he has given himself for you. So if Jesus gave himself for you, I, I remember I, talking to yourself, I talked to myself about this. He said, if Jesus has given himself for me, that means my life is an equivalent to the life of the Son of God. So you are not worthless. You are not just somebody. You are actually the son and the daughter of the God of the universe. You are worthy because Jesus gave himself. It's not that we are worthy in of ourselves. No, we are worthy because of Jesus. Amen? So the Bible says that we are actually blessed. Now, he said, the text also said that he heals all of your what? Disease. And the Bible tells that this is very important. The reason why this is important because in the last day, the book of Matthew tells us that in the last days there will be pestilences in diverse places. You know the word pestilences, a new type or strain of disease without a cure. Right? We've gone through that a little bit. But there will be more and more. As the day goes by and as the last day, uh, we need to learn and to follow the, L, the eight health Laws. Amen? Amen? Now, some of us, we have not been taking care of ourselves. We've been eating junk, and still we're okay. Thank God for that. Amen? But we need to learn the laws of health. These are very important, basic things as Adventists. We know what they are, nutrition, exercise, the new start, right? Nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God. If we follow God's health of law, he will heal our disease. Now, while we are in the world, we cannot avoid being sick. Amen? We will get sick, even if you follow the health laws, because we live in a world of sin. But we 
can do what we can. Because the Bible said that God will bring healing to our soul. You see, we live in the same world as everyone else, affected by sin. And so, of course, we cannot avoid it. In fact, the Bible tells us that when we are sick, God does something for us. Who forgives all our iniquity. The, the next verse, James 5, right? That we can actually pray for one another for healing. Now, we know that healing in the last day is going to be substituted. In fact, we'll do a series on the book of Revelation one day talking about that there is going to be a counterfeit kind of healing, and there's going to be a healing based on the word of God, right? That the devil himself will even perform that fire would come down in the sight of all men. But true healing comes from the submission of our heart to God, knowing that even if my physical body rot like Job, he said, I will still trust him. Amen? So just because you go through suffering physically, it doesn't mean that you are abundant. No, it simply means that you are in a world full of sin, and so we are all contaminated. And so we can actually be thankful that we are still here today. You see, physical healing is not the only thing that's spoken in this text. If we are to do justice to the interpretation of this passage, we cannot simply assign it to any meaning we would like. We must understand that it's the context of this healing is not only the physical aspect, but the spiritual aspect in the book of James, chapter 5. Amen? It says there, anyone among you sick, let him call for the elders of the church, and let him then pray over him. Anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sin, he will be forgiven. So there's a lot of aspects to that right there, the Bible tells us. You see, friends, if you are suffering from fear, from doubt, depression, hunger, lust, hate, jealousy, pride, and greed, the Bible says that we can actually have healing because that is the benefit of serving Jesus Christ. Amen? This soul disease can all be traced back to our fallen sin. But God can forgive us and give us healing of the soul. Verse 3, the Bible tells us as we continue, he heals the what? Brokenhearted and binds up their wound. It's one of my favorite texts in all the Bible. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wound. This is actually a very powerful verse. You know why? Because it means God put bandage on our wound. You know, kids, right, when they get cut, Judy, we always, she always asks for a bandage, right? And God has bandage for us, always. In fact, other translations said he bring bandage to heal our wound. Pretty interesting translation. But here the Bible tells us that he healed the brokenhearted. How many have experienced broken, brokenness? An experience heartache in life, a loss of a loved one, someone dear to you, and cut off a relationship. God brings healing to our brokenness. And friends, I'm encouraging you to come to Jesus, to receive healing, because he can actually bring back those relationships that we need to bring healing. In verse 4, the text says, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and what? Tender mercy. Oh, friend, this verse can be rendered, who keeps your life from going to waste. That's what basically it's saying. Who keeps your life from being wasted. How many of you have wasted most of your years running in the wrong direction? Or maybe... Finding and seeking happiness in all the wrong places. You've gone through many relationships thinking that this man or this woman can bring true happiness in your life. But at the end of the day, you still split up. You still got a divorce. You still got a, a breakup. And friends, the Bible tells us that he can redeem you from such relationship. Amen? How many have wasted our days and lives? You see, at the end of the day, 
The world cannot offer us hope. Any relationship in the world cannot offer us hope. The only one who can offer us hope is Jesus. He can redeem the time that you have wasted. If you've gone through a lot of brokenness, you can be sure that God can redeem you. And I know that many of us can testify to some of this brokenness we've experienced. God gives his people purpose in the way and how and the meaning of their lives. He keeps our lives from going to waste. Our lives are lived with eternal purpose. You see, all lives not lived in Christ are only a shell of what they are intended to be. You know what that means? A life lived without or apart from Christ is simply like a living without life. This is one of the benefits of knowing God. Our lives count and they are not lived in vain. They have eternal significance. This is one of the things that David is praising the Lord for. He understands that he actually lived a purposeful life. And for that he is forever grateful. And he said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And friend, verse 5, I know this text is, is, is amazing because he said, who satisfies your mouth with what? Good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh, friend, beautiful text. He gives us satisfaction. Who satisfy your mouth with good things. And friend, you, it doesn't matter what age you are. Even in your young age, you can be satisfied serving Jesus. Even in your old age, you can be satisfied serving Jesus. Remember, he is speaking to his soul. Who is he speaking to? Okay. David is speaking to who? To his soul. And he's saying that one of the benefits of being God's people is that when we are all gray, because sometimes society today forgets those who are retired. But yet, even... This text is telling us we will not be forgotten. We can look back without regret knowing that God was our God. That we have served him with all of our heart. Regardless of your age or how many years you have walked upon the earth, God will give you satisfaction. Because the only person in the universe who can give you true satisfaction is Jesus. Now you might say, well, pastor, you don't know that Having this or having that, no, friend. You know, in America, the highest suicide in America are in the richest places in Hollywood and many others. The people who are famous, rich, yet they have the highest suicide. It's, it's really sad reality because satisfaction does not come from things, but satisfaction comes from knowing the God that you serve. Amen. Knowing your worth as a person in Jesus Christ. So as we end today, I want you to remember these practical ways to express your love to the Lord. Remember that you need to be aware and not forgetting God's benefit towards you. Think about it. Remember David is talking to not the other people, but he's talking to who? To himself. He said, oh my soul, listen for what has God has done for you. Listen. So be aware and forget not God's benefit for you. How many of you can believe that God has so much benefit for you and has done so much for you? Don't forget that. Be aware of those things. Write it down, in fact. Um, write it down in the journal. Because discouraging days will come. And those things that we look back and, and write down, it can become a strength for tomorrow. Amen. In fact, Ellen White says, we have nothing to fear for the future except we forget what God has done for us in the past. So write them down. If, if you can't write it down in a notebook, write it down in your computer. Amen. But write it down. Number two, be honest when you praise God. Don't be phony. Don't put up an act of phony Christian. It will turn off 
a lot of people. Amen. When you praise God, praise it because you love him. Because you really meant what you are saying. So be, uh, be honest. You understand what God has done for you. So thank him for all that he has done. Number three, be grateful. Always be grateful. There is nothing that encourages praise like gratitude. Have a thankful heart. Have a gratitude heart. Amen. Number four, be vocal. Tell someone, sing his praises, bless someone with a testimony. Share what God has done for you. Because these things are a reminder to, again, David was talking to who? Himself. Okay, only one person remember. All right. Um, then be natural. I know we talk about be aware and, and be honest, but be natural. Praise God in a way that is natural for you. Amen? If you can praise God even with an off tune, hey, praise God that way. Amen? And if you can praise God you in prayer more, then do it that way. Be, we are all unique. Amen? So do it the way that you actually can praise God for. And if you play an uh, instrument, you praise God that way, that's wonderful as well. And of course, always be consistent. Make it a part of your daily experience, daily exercise. How about you? Are you living a life in relationship with God? If so, you cannot help but praise him. This is the same passion that David had. Praising God with all the things that he has. So how do you praise him? We already said about those six things. But friend, you can praise God with how you live. You can praise him with your life. But we must be careful not to fall into the rut of Israel who fell into saying we do this and then they do another. So be genuine about praising God. Friends, I want to share this with your last text. The Bible tells us, Therefore the Lord said, As much as the people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but have removed their heart far from me, their fear toward me is taught by the commandments of, of man. I wish we have time to dissect this. But David was praising God, right? But here God is now giving a lesson. That when you praise God, don't just say it with your mouth. You should live it. You should literally express it, but you should also live a life for the Lord every day. That means that you will praise him in your attitude. That you will praise him in your action. You will praise him in your family circle. You praise him with your finances. You praise him with your words. You praise him with your work and in your work. You praise him with your religion. You praise him with your relationship that you have and that you will build. You praise him with your voice. You praise him with your vocation. And you praise him with the church. And you praise him with your children. And when you praise God with your hobbies. And you praise God with your habits. This is how we praise God. Not like the people who simply say it with their mouth. I will praise him. Not only in word, but also in the way I live my life. I will praise him with everything that is within me. When was the last time you stopped to consider all of God's benefit for you. Do you enjoy those benefits? If you do, have you ever experienced praising him? How many of you have experienced forgiveness? Then express that same forgiveness to others. Are you living a meaningful life, a satisfied life? If you are, share that with the people around you. Does your soul have a disease that need to be healed and cleansed? Is there an addiction that you need to give up? Because if so, God can surely bring healing to your soul. And lastly, I want to ask you, are you living with an eternal purpose? If you are not living with a purpose for God, I invite you today to come and learn at the feet of Jesus. God would love to hear from you. 
But you need to come to him right now. Come to Jesus. And you say, yes, I come. So I can be a person living for Thanksgiving. Let's stand together as we sing our closing song. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. So love ye the world that he gave is us his son. Let's sing together. in heaven we are thankful and grateful for all your many blessings oh lord bless the lord oh my soul bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless the lord bless his holy name lord we are grateful for you we are thankful and lord as we leave this place we don't want to even ask for a prayer request we want to bless you we want to thank you for who you are the goodness of God, the mercy of God, and all that you do for us. Lord, we bless your name. We praise you for who you are.
This is our humble prayer. In Jesus' name.